T-minus 25 seconds. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Starliner. Go Starliner. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and lift off the rise of Starliner and a new era in human spaceflight. Now, ten seconds into flight, people's begun the pitch over program. Body rate responses look good. Now, fifteen seconds in. DU's gone to close the control. Party money looks good at full thrust. Seeing good chief pressure on the best of these. Now 26 seconds into flight. Party 180 now throttling down to partial thrust as expected. Engine response looks good. Now 38 seconds in. Party 180 engine operating parameters continue to look good. Vehicle is now passing through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Chamber pressures on both SRVs continue to look good. RD-180 engine operating parameters also continue to look good. Now passing one minute into flight. And Mach 1, Atlas 5 is now supersonic. And vehicle now throttling up. Engine response looks good. Continue to see good chamber pressure on both SRVs. One minute, 20 seconds into flight. Body rate responses on the vehicle look good. One minute, 30 seconds in, standing by for SRV burnout. And we have burnout on both solid rocket boosters. Atlas will hold on to the SRVs for an additional 48 seconds prior to jettison. RD-180 has gone back up to full thrust as expected. Engine response looks good. One minute, 50 seconds in. Atlas is now 17 miles in altitude, 11 and a half miles downrange distance, traveling at 2,300 miles per hour. Now passing two minutes into flight. RD-180 engine operating parameters continue to look good at full thrust. And at 2 minutes 11 seconds into flight, the Atlas rocket now weighs just one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at a rate of 2,800 pounds per second. And we've seen good indication of jettison of both solid rocket boosters. Vehicle's gone to closed loop guidance. Now just under 2 minutes remaining in the booster phase of flight. 2 minutes 35 seconds into flight. RD-180 continues to perform well. Engine's now throttling down slightly. Engine response looks good. And Atlas 5 is now traveling at over five times the speed of sound. Centaur reaction control system is now pressurizing to flight levels. System response looks good. Three minutes, 10 seconds into flight. Atlas V is now 38 miles in altitude, 80 miles downrange distance, traveling at 5,800 miles per hour. RD-180 engine operating parameters continue to look good. Now one minute remaining until engine cutoff. Body rate responses continue to look good throughout the booster phase of flight. And RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 3.5G acceleration limit. Engine responses will all look good. Three minutes, 55 seconds into flight. And Centaur's begun the boost phase chill-down sequence. 20 seconds to Biko. RD-180 continuing to look good as it throttles to maintain that constant 3.5G acceleration limit. Atlas PU has gone to open loop in preparation for BECO. And standing by for BECO. 
And we have Beco booster engine cutoff standing by for stage separation. And we have good indication of stage separation. We have pre-start on the RL10, standing by for ignition. We have ignition and full thrust on both RL10 engines. Chamber pressures look good on both engines. We have confirmation of ascent cover jettison on Starliner. And we have good indication of aeroskirt jettison. Centaur now resuming active attitude control after successful aeroskirt jettison. Chamber pressures on both RL-10 engines continue to look good. This was a very critical piece of the mission here. Staging is always a very dynamic piece of flight. Now passing five minutes, 30 seconds into flight. And the Centaur RCS system is beginning the initial thruster firings for system thermal conditioning. System response looks good. Now once again, Centaur will continue burning for about another five minutes. Now passing six minutes into flight. And Centaur is now 95 miles in altitude, 570 miles downrange distance, traveling at 12,000 miles an hour. Those dual RL-10 engines continue to propel Starliner. They are uh, making up for a little bit of uh, the booster flying a flatter trajectory and at lower thrust, again, to maintain that 3.5 G forces. Again, a first flight for the dual engine Centaur on an Atlas V. Starliner and Centaur continue to head to orbit. Throughout this Centaur burn, chamber pressures have remained very stable. Just under five minutes now remaining in the burn. And Centaur is now 102 miles in altitude, 800 miles downrange distance, traveling at 12,700 miles per hour. And the Centaur propellant utilization system continuing with active control looks good. Body rate responses are all very close to null. That means Atlas is flying almost exactly where it needs to be. Periodic thruster firing as expected. Now passing eight minutes into flight. If you are just joining us, eight minutes into Starliner's first flight. We've been through a successful booster stage separation. Centaur continues to propel Starliner. The next major milestone will be main engine cutoff at 11 minutes and 58 seconds. Both Centaur RL-10 engines are continuing to perform well throughout the burn. Chamber pressures look good. And now coming up on nine minutes into flight, Centaur is 101 miles in altitude, 1,200 miles downrange distance, traveling at 14,300 miles per hour. Now the two control rooms you are looking at on the left, that is ULA's Denver Operations Control Center. They are a backup control room for the control room on the right, which is the actual Atlas Space Flight Operations Center. They were the ones who launched the rocket about nine and a half minutes ago. Now close to bottle temperatures.
As you can see, everyone is locked in on their screens monitoring data. You might have noticed there wasn't much excitement during launch, but ULA will be happy once we get to uh, stage separation, which is coming up almost 15 minutes after launch, so about five minutes from now. Centaur system performance remains nominal throughout this burn, continuing to see stable values on our fuel and oxidizer tank pressures, main vehicle battery temperatures and pressures, and continuing to see good pressures on our helium and hydrazine storage bottles. Telemetry quality has been good throughout this burn, only seeing very uh, brief minor dropouts. Now approximately one minute remaining in the burn. So once Centaur again, propellant. after Starliner separates from Centaur coming up in about four minutes, Starliner will circularize its orbit with an orbital insertion burn. Again, about 30 seconds to a main engine cutoff. Chamber pressures on both RL-10s continue to look good. Now ahead of main engine cutoff, we are seeing good tank pressure on Starliner itself. Batteries are in a nominal temperature, good pressure sensor readings from Starliner as it prepares to free fly for the first time in orbit. Standing by for main engine cutoff. And we have Miko, main engine cutoff. Body rate responses have remained very stable. Now passing 12 minutes into flight. Now Starliner will stay attached to Centaur again until about 15 minutes. Expected to separate at 14 minutes and 58 seconds after liftoff. And that will be the first time Starliner free flies in orbit. And at that point, uh, Richard Jones and his team in Houston will have full control over the vehicle. And they will set it up for an orbital insertion burn that will take place 16 minutes after separation. Approximately two minutes now remaining until OFT capsule separation. Body rate responses uh, continue to look very stable throughout this coast. So you're looking at the Boeing Mission Control Center there. At this point, they have transitioned to a mission support room. The people you're seeing sitting on console designed, tested, and built Starliner. They are the experts on the systems. So if flight controllers need any help, they will be the ones answering the call. 13 minutes, 30 seconds into flight. Oh, in just over a minute, we're expecting to hear that Starliner has separated from the vehicle. And about one minute now remaining until OFT separation. Body rates in the roll pitch and yaw direction, all very close to null. And about 30 seconds away from spacecraft set.
now standing by for spacecraft separation. And we have good indication of separation of the OFT capsule. There it is. ULA has successfully completed their piece of the mission. Starliner is free flying for the first time in space. From here, the Johnson Space Center mission controllers will be flying Starliner. We will hear reports exclusively from there.